Hello pilots, um, this is our new sewing jig and I just wanted to go and show you a quick demo on how it operates. Uh, first things first though, um, most sewing machines come with the threaded holes within their sewing machine arm and those locations are different on every machine so obviously we're not going to pre-drill holes because um, everyone's different so uh, in this case what we suggest people do is just once you get it aligned properly, and our user manual shows how to do that, um, you just put a piece of thin masking tape on the outside corner here, and then you just measure from that edge to where the threaded holes are on your sewing machine's arm, um, this direction and this direction, and then you know transfer those measurements to the sewing jig, and then drill your hole or two holes that you have available that are threaded within your sewing machine's arm. Um, so that you can uh, bolt it down um, most appropriately so it's really secure but in the interim you can just uh, what I did initially when I first got mine because the holes weren't in, in it either I just masked the tape use masking tape on these four four lower areas and it works just fine okay let's go ahead and do a demo we'll do two different line sizes so you can see how we go about our adjustments um, you have two ways to uh, enter the line. You can go under the bridge here or over the bridge. It's your preference. Try them both out. So I'll get the lines. Uh, let's try a thin, thin line first. Slide it in. And I have the gap be a little bit wider than I anticipate. And I'll go ahead and get it in place, the line that is. And uh, once it's in there, I'll go ahead and drop my presser foot once I get it centered. And then I use my needle to add a reference mark for the center and I'll make sure the line is in the center point so the bisecting the two parallel lines of so the center is right where the needle is and once I have that indicated or set up as such so the presser foot down the needle in the center that's bisecting the two lines then I'll go ahead and tighten uh, up my two movable pieces so there's an etched arrow here pointing down and an etched arrow here up pointing up. And that's the clockwise direction to turn the thread rods to um, open the two movable pieces. And so just the opposite means to close. So we're gonna turn them counterclockwise because as you can see now, or I can see, but uh, trust me on it, it's that there's a little, you know, it's loose, the, it side shifts here. And so I wanna get this piece and this piece snug up against these two lines. So, with that in mind, I'll go ahead and turn these counterclockwise simultaneously and equally together until that I see that they're snug. Okay, that looks pretty snug. I'll just double check. Yep, yeah, that's snug. Okay. And then what I'll do here is a double check is I'll, I still want to make sure that the lines move forward and back freely though. You don't want it too snug. And so, I can see that, hey, we move forward and back freely. We're good to go. So now I'll go ahead and set the zigzag width for the specific line diameter. And uh, get that set. There we go. And then we'll double check that. We'll bring the needle down to see that I'm bisecting top dead center on the line on the left, which I am, so that I know I'm good on the right because I know this line. but. I'll manually put it down in and we'll go with the reverse stitch the first centimeter and I'll hold the two tails as I do that and I'll go forward now when I go forward I'll put the tails on this side of the block to the end, I'll go reverse for a centimeter, there we go, needle up, press your foot up, and then we'll pull it back through the channel.
well, just for visual sake, pull it out this way here, and then we'll cut them off for you. So you can take a quick look here. So you can see the precision on this is right on the money. It's just as good as you can get. Front and back. Okay, and we'll put it back through the tunnel. And we'll try a thicker line. So I'll go ahead and make my gap uh, a little bit bigger than I anticipate. So I follow the arrows because they're clockwise, which are opening these two. Get my tails on this side of the block so I'm ready to go reverse. Now, let's go the line over the top this time because you can go either way. A little bit wider. I'll do the same thing. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll put a straight stitch so the needle's in the center. I'll get the needle down the center and I'll make sure my the needle's bisecting lines right down the middle so that I know my line is my lines are on the center line and then I adjust these around it. So with that in mind I know that you can see that I have a little bit of room on this side more so than that side. And so I'll go counterclockwise on this side to tighten it up. And the other side looks pretty good. Yeah, we're tight. Yeah. And then we want to make sure it goes forward and back still. So I lift the pressure up just a hair. And then I can see that, you know, we can go forward and back really easy still. So that's what we want to maintain that, that aspect. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and set our zigzag stitch for this line and uh, it's a larger line so we have to make that and it's also sheath air mid so I gotta adjust the tension higher and then we'll set it for reverse the first centimeter and my needle hasn't just side shift okay I'll go ahead and get her started manually okay we'll go do the first Centimeter reverse. Okay. Now I'm going to put the tails on the other side of the block because we're going to go forward. And on these larger, thicker lines, I like to have my hand in the back to give it a little tension. I'm not pulling it, but it's a little tension so it doesn't fall in the, the feed dog gap. And then being the lines going over the top, I, I just make sure it stays in the channel up right here. So we're doing good, so we can speed her up. Nice. Slow her down at the end. And we'll do a reverse. Okay, we're good. So, needle up, feed dog up, and then what you'll notice when you go over the top here versus underneath, it's so much easier to you know get everything out because it's it's not trapped by the tunnel. So we'll take a look at this, and um, as you can see, the precision is just impeccable. It's where you ever set it. You set it right, it's going to be right, and so that's just. I, didn't, I caught my tail there, but that's not Jake's problem, that's mine. But as you can see here, it's just unbelievably right on the money. So anyhow, they give you a good demo on how this thing works, how easy it is to adjust for different sizes. Thank you for listening.